Yeah, that's true. The market has endless opportunities. It's all about waiting for them. And if you are, have a small account, there is opportunities like everywhere, all the time, pretty much. It's all about catching them. It's a bit trickier with a bigger account. You gotta be so patient. Will you have a late day if you start to trading one after after opening? Um, well, if you get to the markets an hour after market open, you will definitely miss some opportunities. Uh, but there's still a, enough opportunity, I think. You're gonna miss some, definitely. Yeah, GME does look okay. It does look decent. I'm um, yeah. On the weekly, it looks actually pretty powerful on the weekly. SM. Uh, it looks. I mean, it's it's an oil oil stock. It's kind of lagging right now. On the daily, it's very choppy. It look it very choppy. Um. But I mean, if it breaks out and the oil, oil, you know, is continually strong, I mean, it could make a move. Holy shit! This thing was at buck forty like six months ago. Not bad. That's a, uh, that's a decent move. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's a maybe setup. Kind of, it's a laggard right now. That's that's a problem. What's the double uh, difference between IWN and IWM? Um, IWN is the Russell 2000 value index. It's just the value stocks. And IWO is just the growth stocks in the Russell 2000. While IWM is both the value and growth stocks in the Russell 2000 index. As you can see, IWN has been kind of strong lately because value stocks have done much better than growth stocks. IWO has been, you know, it looks like past three months because growth stocks haven't done well and the IWM is kind of in between because it uh, includes both uh, uh, growth and value stocks man the natural gas ETF looks interesting it's kind of trying to reclaim the downtrend it looks you know something similar like it looked here back in late 2018 hey guys Anyone, anyone has any in, insight into natural gas? It's always sketchy, a uh, little bit sketchy trading commodities just based on the chart. Oh, so it's weather dependent. Okay. So you, if I buy nat, this UNG here, I'm gambling on the weather. You know what? Sounds like a great trade idea. I think I'll do some. I don't think I've ever gambled on weather before. How does the volume spike on boil and not move after you bought 400k shares? Well, I bought 300k shares and the reason is because these ETFs, they kind of, they create shares. So you can do like enormous size with all, no slippage. That's why I'm going to start using uh, ETFs more going forward in my trading because it's very scalable. Like something like boil, like the dollar volume is really low. The dollar volume. Like if it was a stock, I wouldn't be able to buy more than maybe 20,000 shares of this thing. And I would have some slippage. But this thing, I, I you know, I just bought 300,000. I had like a few pennies of slippage. It's incredible. I think going forward, most of my money will be in the ETFs. Because you can do so much size on these things. Like incredible size. Yeah, exactly. So these ETFs, they are, they're, they're trading on the underlying asset, not on the like supply demand of the ETF itself. So they kind of create and redeem shares um, depending on the supply and demand, what, from what I understood. Someone tried to explain it to me, but it looks a little bit like an EP here. And I do like how it kind of is reclaiming the 200 day after multi-year downtrend. Now I know like TA doesn't, it's, it's not really as helpful um, as on a stock because these things are very, you know, they, they kind of trade, uh, trade another way. But I mean, looking back, this thing can make some pretty decent multi-week, multi-month moves. Uh, when it gets going, so that's pretty much what I'm betting betting on. Yeah, you know, 
if you if you if you have a small account you, you, there, you, if you haven't made millions in the stock market already you have absolutely no business trading these triple natural gas etfs you're absolutely no business touching them just putting it out there stick to the basics first stick to the micro small cap mid cap stocks the simple setups on those if you haven't made money from those you're not gonna make money on triple natural gas etfs I i'm just saying <laughs> well chats broke out on friday um we could have another setup later in this week but yeah yeah friday was the entry on on these airlines aal had a nice candle ual dal aal was the one that had the best setup i think and some of the cruise lines were oh well these charts kind of look weak but um yeah yeah the airlines were really strong on friday i'm gonna start watching the weather report every day now and share on my boil etf so are we looking for good weather or bad weather which which is it, which is it gonna be like what's the driver for natural gas is it good hey david do we want good weather or bad weather and also where do we want the weather i'm doing deep fundamental research here hot weather where where do we want hot weather east coast okay i'm gonna tune in on the uh, weather reports every day for the u.s east coast extreme hot weather okay let's 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 uh let's just sit and wait for climate change to do its thing yes i can see baidu and i'm not really excited about it there's a lot of overhead yeah, it's passing of the 200 day, but yeah, you know, actually could be a potential entry point. Could be. I'm not really excited about anything right now. Semiconductor in um, ETF also it needs another week at least, but then it will be looks powerful. ETFs, ETFs can make big moves. Look at move uh, TNA made between November and February. Went up 175%. Now imagine putting half of your money in this thing. That's also great about the ETF since you already are buying a portfolio of stocks. You don't need to be as diversified. You can do more. You can put a third or half of your money in something like this. Versus, you know, I would never put half of my money in an individual stock. That's just moronic behavior. And, you know, look at what this uh, HEQ, last time silver had a run, look at the move from this high tight flag break. Look at the move it made, 150%. These triple ETFs can make big, big moves. And you can do insane size. Oh, man. If I can catch something like this, you only need to catch a few of these per year. Doesn't matter if it's a stock index or a, or whatever, or like a commodity ETF or whatever. You know, you catch a couple of moves like this per year on significant size. You know, you have a third or maybe even half of your portfolio in it and use some kind of a trailing stop. Man, you're going to outperform most market participants. This Carvana looks very vulnerable in the weekly. It loses the 50 weekly. Could get interesting. Man, this Tesla looks like fucking death. I mean, it's, you know, the Nasdaq gapped up. This thing gapped down. Oh, man. Yeah, ERKK looks like tomb. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a potential bear flag here. And, you know, if it goes sideways here a few few days and then breaks down, I'm going to short the shit out of this thing. And maybe even add to Tesla too if it uh, if it builds this bear flag for another few days. I mean, these things just don't look healthy at all. Oh, man. I just can't even get up for air. Man, this AMC, I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. A 60 minute, like these types of flags had great follow through last year i i don't know if if it's you know 
uh, I mean, it looks great on the 60 minute. It looks powerful, you know. Six, uh, six, 12 months ago, something like this, it would go up 50, 100% in a few weeks. Yeah, AMC, you know, look, <laughs> if you think this is going up because of fundamentals, you're out of your mind. This is a pure pump, pure pump. This thing is probably gonna go bankrupt. It's a pure pump. FNKO, yeah, that was a f one hell of a shakeout. Yeah, that that's what happens in uh, markets like this. Even the five star setups. Yeah, that sucks. The setup here, I think it was earnings day also. Yeah, I think it was earnings. Five star, and then, <laughs> and now, boink. Probably gonna go to 40 now. RRD from yesterday. Uh, I don't know, maybe four, three and a half stars, maybe. It's, it's, it had a nice little trend going. Had a tightening range. And then a breakout candle. I would say three and a half stars, maybe four. Nah, I mean, not four. Uh, I would say three and a half. Many times these commodity names, cyclical names can make enormous moves. But the problem, especially like the beaten down ones. But the problem is they're very, very low market cap and very liquid when they are, when they're beaten down. Uh, where's the parabolic? I'm having trouble finding the parabolic here. Guys, if you want a parabolic short something, you have to do it in a stock that is parabolic. Pro tip. Otherwise, you're gonna be roadkill. You should review this, uh, the uh, the setup. Follow the link on the screen. Instructions on the screen. You should really review the setup because that was not a parabolic. You, you're gonna get. You're gonna be roadkill if you short something like that. FTNT is is it is it a good setup? Does this look like a good setup? Does it look like it's nice and tight? And also, what's the ADR on this? Uh, and also, you know, something like BTX, it's down 70%. Like, these things don't necessarily have to bounce just because it's down. It, they can bounce, but it's been kind of a s orderly selling. Like, if you want to do meaner version, meaner version longs, I think like the ones that violently sell off are much better. It's the same thing with the shorts. You want violent moves, not orderly, orderly moves. It's the violence that creates that creates an edge. <sighs> What's Doge doing? Yeah, it's in the middle of a tight range right now. It's kind of building higher lows, lower highs. Very tight range. Let's look at the hourly chart yeah like instead of bottom fishing any of these like stuff like roku or crowd strike or whatever net maybe that are bouncing off their like 150 200 day averages i just bought this fngu which is like the fang stocks and twitter and tesla and a few more like last time it bounced off a major moving average. It made a big move, almost for yeah, like 47% almost. Yeah, like a lot of these former runners are kind of bouncing off their 150, 200 day moving averages. I, I don't know what to make of it. You know, like something like this could be a setup. Like there's a lot of setups like these out there. Um, like FNGU also looks pretty much the same. They undercut like the 200 day, reclaimed, built higher lows, and now they're having a range break. It's a lot of names like that out there right now. Not sure what to make of it. Like these are not the types of setups I prefer to trade. But just the fact that a lot of stocks are, are, are doing the same thing could be a short, you know, at least a short term positive for these types of stocks. Like even, you know, the like ARKK looks about the same. But can they make big moves? That's the question. Like something like ARKK, maybe it bounces back to the 20 day or maybe even the 50 day. And then what? It could very easily resume the selling. 
But definitely a short-term swing trading opportunity. Chat room? There's no chat room buying FNGU. They're all pumping liquid mi micro caps. There's a reason I never call out trades. Because I know there's a bunch of morons gonna blindly follow me into the depths of hell. Yeah, this is about, you know, you, you want to follow someone, go follow some fraud on Twitter. Join a paid pa chat room, you know, you have you have no place to be here. I don't want you here. This is this this community is all about studying. Putting in the work so you can stand on your own two legs. Not blindly follow someone. All I'm doing is handing out fishing poles and teaching you how to fish. And if you don't want to put in the work, I'm gonna take the fishing pole and beat the shit out of you. And then I'm gonna kick you out.